What we're going to be going over here are available for sale securities with a fair value option for holding an investment ownership of securities of another company. And for example here, Corporation A purchases the stock here of Corporation B. They classify it as available for sale and they're going to elect to report this security using the fair value option. And Corporation A acquires 10% of the 200,000 shares of common stock here of Corporation Corporation B, so they're going to uh, have a 10% ownership here in Corporation B after they acquire these shares. Now, they're going to pay here $28 per share for these common stocks that they purchased, and Corporation B is going to have paid a cash dividend for the year here of $150,000, and Corp B also reports net income for the year here of $244,000, and we're going to be looking at our reporting period here at 1231x1, the end of the year here. And we also have to note the market price here of common stock was $30 per share here at our end of the year reporting period. They paid $28 per share here. That was their cost. But now the fair value of those uh, shares of common stock or their market price here is $30 per share. Okay. So first let's go down and let's look at where the guidelines here for the fair value option that we're going to be using here. So we're going to be using the fair value method for uh, for value or for uh, reporting these securities here. But and in a, we're going to be making the com comparison here where we're going to be also be comparing it to the fair value option here. So we've got really two things that we're going to be looking at here. So for the fair value option, uh, first here, you elect it's elected on an investment by investment basis here. So we're looking at each of the, uh, the, the securities on an individual basis here rather than on a portfolio basis. Now our example here is only for one security here, but with the fair value method, you're generally looking at a portfolio of securities. And when you use the fair value option, you have to look at uh, each of those securities separately here when you're doing your uh, reporting on those securities here. And point two, you, it's generally available only at the time a company first purchases the security. So you got to make that option here when you first purchase those securities here. And then once it's chosen, you must measure the security at its fair value uh, until it's it's no longer owned or using this fair value option until it's no longer owned or it's sold here. Okay, so first, let's just go up and look at our available for sale securities, just the regular fair value method here. Now this is where the fair value option is not elected here. So really the big distinction here between the fair value method and our where the fair value option is, is how you uh, classify, well, how you handle these securities here. And fair value, uh, our fair value for sale of securities, that's what they were uh, classified as here. But when you're using the just a fair value method here, you take and you set up an account here, would, would it say here for your securities available for sale. And, and that's when available for sale, we're talking about holding securities, you have less than a 20% ownership in the other company. So you set up your available for sale on a portfolio basis. So if you have a number of different uh, securities, they all get lumped into this available for sale account here for the total portfolio. And then we have to make using the fair value method, you're going to do a fair value. You have to make an adjustment at the end of the reporting period for those available for sale securities. And based on that adjustment, you're going to have some unrealized holding gain or loss. And in this case, with the fair value method, it goes into an equity account here. So let's just look at what we would do here for our available for sale securities. And that uh, you uh, you record them at its, their cost here. So you've acquired 10% here of the 200,000 shares of Corp B here, and the cost was $28 per share here. So you debit your available for sale account here for $560,000 here. And then we threw, and then uh, ca cash, you would have credited or reduced your cash account here by $560,000, which you have paid for them. And then we just threw some dividends in here to show what's going on there. So uh, for the dividend, uh, Corp B paid out a total cash dividend 150,000 Corp A gets 10% since they own that amount so they just credit their dividend revenue here on their income statement for $15,000 and then moving over to our cash account they would have debited or increases their cash here 
uh, for the dividend received here, $15,000. Okay, so now this is the distinction we want to make here when we're going to be looking at the regular fair value method versus the fair value option. So with the fair value method, you just you have to set up a valuation account here that increases or decreases your avail available for sale securities here on a portfolio basis. So that's the key here. It's on a portfolio basis. You take and you lump your total portfolio into your adjustment here. So the adjustment uh, it has a direct uh, its valuation account rather than a cr uh, recording in our any uh, changes in the value directly into our available for sale uh, securities account our cost account here we set up this fair value adjustment here so on a portfolio basis and then well let's look at our adjustment here first so what we at looking at the end of the period here well we have a market price here at thirty dollars that's a fair uh, fair market price on those shares here uh, we compare it to the cost of twenty eight dollars times the twenty thousand shares that we're holding here ten percent of the two hundred thousand so we get forty thousand dollar increase here in our valuation our market price here is greater than our cost on those shares. So that's the distinction that you have to make here. So we debit our fair value adjustment here for $40,000. Again, that's the portfolio here. Now, with what we, any increases or decreases here in our fair value adjustment, go into an unrealized holding gain or loss account into equity here. That's the distinction that we're going to be looking at here. When just the regular fair value method, everything goes in, any gains or, or any adjustments go into the equity account here on the balance sheet here. So we had the debit here of 40000 here. Our adjustment, we increased our available for sale security here by 40000 So we had 560000 cost, increase it by 40000 So what do we have? $600,000 of fair value of our portfolio even though we're looking only in one security with uh, a ver fair value method you lump it into the portfolio and then our unrealized holding gain of loss gone into equity here credited that here for forty thousand dollars so it's sitting in an equity account and it'll sit there until you sell off those securities then you'd recognize any gain or loss going into the income statement but equity account here on the balance sheet and again that would re be reported as other comprehensive income is part of shareholders equity as a separate item here in shareholders equity and then we also have to note here where corp b here had net income for the year here of 244,000 but in either case here fair value method or fair value option uh, when you have these available for sale securities and you own less than a 20 percent interest in the company you uh you do not share any net income here of the investi what we invested in in corporation b so corporation b had net income but you're not going to get any uh, since you have less than 20% ownership here by Corp A. So that, and net income didn't figure in here. Okay, so now let's go down and let's look at our available for sale securities here with the fair value option here. Okay, so there's, this is the distinction that we have to make here. Again, we set up our available for sale securities account here at its cost here, but it's on an individual basis here. You'd have to set it up for each of your securities that your own or the stocks. In this case, we only had one for our example here. So you just say available for sale security here and Corp B, you'd have to label it Corp B stock. So each security you have to handle separately here when you're using the fair value option here. So same as we had above here. We've debited that here for the cost that we had here. In this case, it was just that one security, 560000 and in our cash, we'd have reduced it by that amount. And then dividends would have been the same here. We got the 10% of the 150,000 cash dividends that Corp B declared. So credit that here for 15,000 and then uh, debit your cash received here for 15,000. So everything stays the same. But when you're using this fair value option, you have to break out your securities that you own on an individual basis. So that's versus the uh, just a regular available for sale fair value method. We did it as a portfolio basis, but here with the option you do it on an individual basis. And then the other thing, we don't really have an adjustment account or a valuation account, but it amounts to the same thing here. You set up, uh, you label it here as an investment, in this case, Corp B stock on an individual basis. So 
individually you're going to look at a change in your investment here so you have to, and that's on the balance sheet here so the end of the period same as we had with the regular fair value method we look at the market price here fair market price thirty dollars versus our cost twenty eight dollars per share times our uh, number of shares we're holding again that was forty thousand dollars here so we're debit our investment account here for forty thousand dollars and you make have to make the distinction it's on an individual basis here per your security we're only looking at one here but it's on an individual basis now and this adjustment again is at the end of the period here our reporting period here 1231 x1 so debit that here for forty thousand dollars it's not a valuation account it's really a separate account but it's doing about the same thing as the valuation account did uh, that we had above here but then this is for any change any increases or decreases in that an investment account based on the market price here and our cost that goes into an unrealized holding and gain a loss account here again but it becomes part of income so we immediately uh, recognize income here and any changes in this in this investment and that is reported on the income statement here whereas with the a, a regular uh, fair value method we were just looking at it as part of equity here and it was sitting on the balance sheet until it sold but here we recognize any gain or loss here and the change of our valuation of our investment here immediately goes into income on the income statement here okay so just to summarize what we do here we these are two points we look looked at here. Uh, you, uh, point A and B here I'm showing do not use the fair value adjustment and, and unrealized when you're using the fair value option you don't set up a, a, a label it as a fair value adjustment account you set it up on an individual basis and you have to label it as or uh, uh, record it as an investment here and for the specific uh, security that your investment in this case is Corp B stock so you do not use any fair value adjustment account you set up an investment account here it acts really as the same thing as that adjustment but it's done it's separated on an individual basis and any unrealized holding gain or loss here is part of net income it goes into net income or, or uh, using the fair value option here so each of those periods here you have to look at what your cost is for the period versus your fair value and then you make that adjustment into this an investment account on an individual basis here and any and uh, changes here in that in your fair value they get recognized here as part of uh, income here and unrealized holding gain or label as unrealized holding gain or loss as part of income here on your income statement okay so those are the distinctions here using the regular fair value method you had that fair value adjustment here but when you uh, elect the fair value option you have to set up this investment account here on an individual basis and same for your available for sale security cost here you set it up on an individual basis and then when you do make your adjustment it um, for the end of the period or reporting period here it goes into an unrealized holding gain and with the fair value option again remember it goes directly into income here on the income statement whereas with just the fair value method here it was held in an equity account here on the balance sheet here and then uh, this this unrealized holding gain or loss and in income it's in again it's included in net income here for the current period so it would be reported here and have to be list, listed as other revenues of or some type of distinction to show what it that it came out of this uh, your uh, available for sale uh, security here using the fair value option you'd have to label it as such so, but it becomes part of net income here for the current period and then again here um, because Corp B it has net income for the year here same thing with the fair value option you just don't uh, because you're all holding less than 20 percent here you wouldn't share in any net income of corp b's here um, okay so we have went over our available for sale securities here and it's there's not a big distinction except that you have when you're using this fair value option everything is broken out on an individual basis for and you would have to label your accounts here your adjustment account here is uh, for the investment for the specific security you're looking at on an individual basis same with your cost up here you're you're available for sale the security you're looking at it 
comparing them on an individual basis, whereas with their regular fair value method, you were grouping them or you were looking at total portfolios. And then just remember here, any unrealized holding gain or loss basis on your uh, end the period adjustments here based on cost versus the fair value or the market price here uh, goes into uh, goes right into uh, income into the income on the income statement. Okay, so that takes care of our discussion here for the fair available for sale securities here. And when we're talking about available for sale securities, uh, we're talking about less than 20% ownership in the other company. And in our example, there was a 10% purchased uh, Corp A purchased 10% ownership here in Corp B. So uh, they based everything was based on that. 10% ownership here. So uh, available for sale, that's when you have less than 20% ownership in the company that you've invested in here. And just remember here, uh, fair value option, everything is tracked on an individual basis for your adjustments and the period adjustments. And then it, in the end, any changes in your investment account here based on your fair value or your cost versus fair value goes into the unrealized holding gain or loss on your in directly onto your income statement.